Um, I'm Katie Hilton. I'm here in New York City. It's uh, actually raining today, which is nice. It's starting to feel like autumn. Very excited to um, to meet you finally, Thriti. Well, uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Thriti, and I'm here in Puerto Rico. Um, I'm in the rainforest in the southeast of the island, uh, where I direct a, a sustainable forestry and rainforest enrichment project. So. My life really is uh, within trees and in nature all the time. So nice to meet you, Katie. <laughs> yeah, and I, um, I'm thinking of last night, I was outside up at the UN. We had, because this is the week of the COP26 is just finishing up and we had a vigil right. um, for climate justice. And of course, we acknowledged, we did a land acknowledgement. And this is something that's been um, on my mind recently is, to acknowledge where we are. So this is Manhattan and Lenape um, land. And because uh, there's been a lot of conversation, I was on a Zoom with um, folks in Ireland who were talking about trying to bring in rights of nature, change the constitution to include rights of nature. Mm -hmm. And they asked me what, what is yeah. this, the conversation now with indigenous thinking. And I said, it's funny you should ask because this is what's been on my mind. Land acknowledgements, what, what do they mean? Okay, they do serve a purpose and it's it's positive. But is it just tokenism? Right, because this is, I've seen this slight backlash going out. I'm a white lady throwing it out there, acknowledging, doing a land acknowledgement, and then that means I can carry on and, and, and do everything that I would normally do anyway. That's interesting, yeah. So that's um, me making a land acknowledgement and, and, and then throwing it back at throwing you. Throwing it out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I was interested in your uh, tree. You made a tree alphabet. I feel that was, uh, I, I, I had very little time to just check into it, but it excited me no end, even though I didn't like get further than just looking at your webpage. Um, and it's that, I don't know, uh, uh, delving into nature, um, or, you know, having uh, been privy to some of the uh, concepts that the School of the Anthropocene has been um, forwarding to, to us in that sense, that we are in a nature deficit and that we need to get back into contact with nature. But that's really easy to say, how, how is it going to happen? Um, and things like uh, the humanities, arts, uh, social, um, social sciences are going to get us there because we have had, for instance, you know, we are in the Anthropocene era where we are having an impact on our biosphere in, in ways that, uh, you know, are, are starting to hit us. And our failure to act on what we know is not, um, is not a failure of science or technology. Um, we have to, you know, the solutions are going to lie in the realm of, you know, philosophy, arts, humanities, and social sciences to get us to care about what the scientific data is giving us about where we live. Um, you know, how is it changing where we are? You know, so what, what was that? You said the land acknowledgement. I think, it, yeah, it really starts where we are right now, not somewhere on the planet, because climate change has its you know, the image of climate change is the planet, uh, for me anyway. And I find that I need to I keep bringing myself back down to, you know, the micro and not keep thinking it's this big thing that I don't have any real say in because it's just big oceans. And, you know, how do I get down to my immediate thing that I'm on right now? You know, mm -hmm. and I think um, this is one of one of the issues with it is that we have to think on different scales, uh, time scales, mm -hmm. uh, physical scales, as you said. Think about our immediate, like yeah. me as a human here. Where am I, and how do I connect with my community? So that's why last night is on my mind. We all we came together um, for that vigil, which was really beautiful, especially after COVID, where a lot of us, well, most of us, our species had to isolate. And so seeing each other again yeah. is, is very powerful. But the, for me, it was very much, um, you know, you mentioned the alphabet. So, you know, I made the 
this book about trees. And that was the first reason that I, I made the alphabet so that I could actually type with trees. So it was a way to think. Oh. I really needed to, yeah, to think beyond this, this human language, which I think is creating a lot of problems. It's obviously a, a beautiful invention and a creation that humans have language and we can communicate. Yeah. Um, but so can everything else that we're living with. We just are on different frequencies like the trees, so Suzanne Simard's work that's now, you know, she's a scientist who's done studies to show that the trees, they communicate and they cooperate. Um, and so I thought if we, um, this is just, you can see the, the font. So the tree drawings that I made, each letter of the Latin alphabet got yeah. its own tree. And so when you type, the mm -hmm. trees pop up. And it's just a very simple way to try and slow down thinking and thought processes like for even um yeah. a word like nature what what is nature that was why i came to new york to begin with i came on a fulbright a long time ago a long time ago to, to look at our relationship with nature with, with that word um and that 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 entity knowing that we you know we humans are nature and the city is nature um but to come it's become complicated and especially with this election that we had, the 2016 one, where language was twisted and truth. Um, but I, I love what you said about the, the planetary expanding it out, but then constantly trying to bring it down to the macro in your own body and place. And maybe that's where um, I think with the, the new school, that's something I immediately was drawn to, the thought that we could actually be together again, thinking together on the streets. And I was very much interested in... Um, in thinking like forest thinking, which is something that you probably know a lot better than I do. Because I, I grew up in the bogs in Ireland. Um, you know, I'm obviously oh. a tree person. I love trees, but I'm, I'm really a bogger. <laughs> and um, so, so forest thinking and, and how can we reuse this, uh, this tangled way of, of being together in a, a place. So just a simple act of walking is, is very powerful. And uh, so I, I'm not sure what you can um, teach me through Zoom in, in, in a minute. But when I say forest well, thinking. Actually, well, actually, I think, you know, uh, uh, working with uh, the idea of a new school and, and what does it, uh, what, what in, the, in the Anthropocene era, you know, the, the regular university and um, I think... Uh, I'm just reading from what Michael sent us, how might higher education mitigate its relentless focus on the survivalist demands of the present and all, all of that. And I think that we have to create new standard operating procedures, which are to do with walking, meditation, philosophy, self-development, all of these things that are not uh, on the highest priority list of like any kind of economic uh, uh, high, high higher education, um, uh, you know, curriculum, as it were, and how to how to move into zones where those kinds of things are prioritized. For instance, I mean, here I am in in uh, the rainforest of Puerto Rico. So this project was set up by a bunch of folks who uh, in the 60s had many ideas to, how do we work with the biosphere? Well, we have to learn about biomes. And that for me, and, and when I first heard that was just like a of uh, inspiration. Like that finally brought me into, okay, you can go to the micro, work with the micro to understand the macro. So. I don't want to get keep going into those um, that, that um, phrase, but coming to the rainforest, I realized that if I can learn something about this biome, I can learn something about me. And um, it's taken me uh, over 15 years to realize that, but I'm glad that I finally have realized that so that I can pass it on, is that you know, working with trees and growing trees and living with trees has been um, a, a, a vital component to my survival, uh, just emotionally and physically. Witnessing also an extreme uh, event, 
which was Hurricane Maria. But Hurricane Maria wasn't just a severe or extreme ecological event. It was an extreme sociological event, technological event, because everything in Puerto Rico got broken by a, an, you know, uh, an extreme environmental uh, impact. Um, but everything was affected. And it's taken living in this forest to see and watch the recovery, not, not just of the trees, but it's been the trees that have really shown me uh, what recovery means because it doesn't happen in a week or a year. I have literally seen trees coming back to life after four years, trees that I thought were dead. And I realized that there's got to be all kinds of um, other things that come into place before uh, something can um, bloom. It may be lying there underneath the surface. So in terms of like new education and new ways of looking at curriculums, the ground has to be laid to create this kind of uh, pathway that has these trees, I'm calling them trees, which are like, you know, torchlights, flashlights in the dark that, you know, we are drawn to and that we are then, you know, in a space where we can learn something, not just about the environment, but we learn that we are actually part of that environment and not, it's not separate from us. And is Maria still <laughs> impacting <laughs> daily? Sorry, I don't know what that noise is. Well, our infrastructure, you know, so human, all of, all of our human things were broken just as much as the forest around us, but our human things don't fix themselves like the trees do or the forest does. You know, watching mm -hmm. the uh, succession of uh, different plant life after the hurricane, when everything is stripped, it's full sunlight in, in a zone that doesn't usually receive full sunlight and seeing what sunlight does to uh, that. Of course, we have um, broken uh, infrastructure that, you know, these are things that we have to do fundraising, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I'm happy to be in a forest where I can have drawn the strength from uh, seeing that, you know, again, that whole thing about laying the foundation for the new things to arise. You have to, there's many things like, you know, within the social sphere of Puerto Rico and the economic sphere that we are in, we have to lay the ground just like the forest lays the ground with new, you know, the, the growth of new things before the trees can, you know, become revivified in any way. And that's the same with us too, you know, like right now I'm still finding my way out of, of the hurricane uh, emotionally uh, as well as economically, uh, physically, uh, all of these things. Yeah. Yes. And you mentioned economics and I think isn't this, this kind of gets to the heart of, of everything really. It's all, I spoke with Diana Beresford Kroger a few years ago before COVID and mm -hmm. she mentioned <laughs> that she was in Canada and working with the boreal forest up there. And we were obviously talking about Ireland. She's from Ireland originally and has this knowledge, deep knowledge of the trees, but she kept, she couldn't get, um, beyond the fact that really I, I'm here in New York City in the, what did she call it? I think that the Church of the Holy Dollar and everything comes back, unfortunately, <laughs> to this this Church of the Holy Dollar and, and money. And uh, yeah. I have to say, when, when Michael first reached out and we had the conversation about the new school, um, it always, I never, I never went past doing a BA myself because I just couldn't afford to go to college. And yeah, when I came over same. here, on a, yeah, I came over on a Fulbright thinking, oh, it would be natural to do a PhD because the work that I was on and I spoke with um, Cornell about it and they were very excited. But then the, the issue of finances came up and I was like, well, that's not going to happen. That's beyond. And I realized I could just do it myself in, in the world. But I, th I think, you know, that's so long ago now with the pressure that that students are under and how the, the world has speeded up. I, I just feel you know, the sense of, of speed, everything happening so fast now that we've um, all moved yeah. out of our, the chrysalis that we were in during COVID. Um, yeah. Here in, in New York City, it's just 
relentless. Everything is moving so fast. People want to go back to normal, which is obviously what created all of this to begin with. So why do we want to go back there? But it's um, mm-hmm. it's exhausting, and I I do wonder about the the issue. Just to to keep um, looking back at our friends, the trees. How and Suzanne Samard's work has she shown that we've always been told, you know, trees compete with each other, right? You were saying about that area where the light area that didn't have light now has light. So we were always told that the trees fight, they fight for light and they fight for space and they fight for minerals, they fight for water. And, and it's like our, we are our, our story that we're told about survival of the fittest. And then her research yeah. actually shows, well, wait a minute, it's, it's not like that at all. They cooperate. So instead of competition, it's cooperation yeah. and hybrid ways of working together and beyond the self, even the fact that a human isn't a human. I'm not a, a me, an individual. I'm made up of millions of different bacteria and my microbiome is, is like a mini version of the planetary biome. And so how, how do true. you yeah, work with this cooperation? Um, because it, it seems to me... I, you know, I'm an artist, so I try and I always see things in a very simple way. I work with a, a pencil and a piece of paper. I'm, I'm a simple human. And how yeah. these issues seem very, very simple, but yet it becomes so complex and complicated that we twist it all back because there is this fight for, for money and power and how to to take the, the school beyond that, that need for, for finance and for um, having to deal with the economic system because you know I, the sign I made last night had saved the trees on one side and on the back side it had uproot the system and I it's easy for me to go uproot the system outside the UN and run in front of the traffic but what does that actually yeah. mean yeah yeah I, I I see exactly what you're saying there um, I'm also an artist and um, I also had the you know the, the benefit of uh, doing my bachelor's in England um, and that was just before everything became a business where you had to pay for everything so I was very lucky in that moment in time in my mid-20s I became um, a long-term volunteer I'm now 56 and I'm still a volunteer um, So the projects I've worked on have been projects where make the mission work, whatever it may be. And I've been involved with uh, the Institute of Ecotechnics, which has been a a life changer for me since I met uh, several of the uh, elders uh, many moons ago now. Um, And that was the whole idea of like working uh, with a biome. So I started at the October Gallery in London, which is the city biome. And, you know, biomes have uh, as much impact, if not more, than any of the other biomes on our biosphere. So, uh, you know, uh, studying a city is is an important part of studying our biospheres. Then I lived on the oceans on a a research vessel um, studying coral reefs. So that was how I uh, realized that... um, knew nothing about land and when I came back to land I threw myself really into tree work with uh, the founders who have a ranch in New Mexico high desert biome and I started taking care of uh, a a high desert uh, organic uh, fruit orchard and then I started coming back and forth to Puerto Rico um, working with trees and um, the question people say, well, where did you get the money from to, you know, this and that? Well, I'm a painter and I paint and every so often I sell a painting. Um, but how do you eat? Well, you know, I work with volunteer, volunteer projects, people that come um, to stay, to learn, people pay for food and accommodation. And that whole process helps to keep several individuals uh, 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 able to continue with projects um and not have such huge financial burdens then the question is well who owns the land well the founders of this project who are the institute of ecotechnics own this land they managed to buy it uh, many moons ago in puerto rico um to reforest the land and um the idea was to leave the land better than you found it well 20 i've been here 21 years it's the project's been here nearly 40 years and i can honestly say that you know the, the land is in much better shape than it was uh, when they bought the land 
Um, but, you know, still we have to make the money to pay electric bill. Uh, we're not quite solely yet. We're not uh, alternative energy. We're not off the grid. So these are these are things that we have to consider and keep thinking about. We're not out. We're not out of the range of having to make money to travel uh, and do the things that we want to do. Have a laptop, for instance, uh, internet. Somebody's got to pay for the internet. So, you know, these are things that we still need to keep working on. Um, but you know, I think the change that we're looking for is, uh, you know, looking at. Um, when we're looking at economics, it's, you know, the GDP is not a, uh, um, a beneficial way to uh, look at the health of a nation. Um, and in fact, um, I was looking at an article that called it the genuine process, uh, the genuine progress indicator, which was, which would br bring in a, a, a regenerative economy that, um, took more into account planetary health and social uh, people health more than anything else. So, you know, the, the macro economy has to change before our micro economies can really change. I think we're still, we're all caught up in the, this uh, uh, worldwide net of the economic system, which is not sustainable. We know that, um, but we have to find our way to extricate ourselves from it just thinking about growth you know that mm -hmm. that word it's 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 kind of it tussles um and there's a tension because growth you know i, I think about plant knowledge right and learning from the plants right. but and growth is a positive thing right even humans you know it's it's we need to grow ourselves spiritually emotionally and just as as humans and beings but then we've got the economic system and that kind of growth is the exact opposite because the, the yeah. graphs go like this. <laughs> We're supposed to, you know, we are supposed to keep on growing. And you mentioned GDP. Yeah. We're, economies are, su are supposed to always, uh, it, it just boggles my right. mind when you think about the numbers. Yes. And, um, recursion no that's the wrong word uh, my dad was a mathematician so I, I fail him miserably when it comes to numbers but you know what I mean we've got one number and then you multiply it and then you multiply it um, and then you've got this huge you've got more than stars in the skies and that's exponential, uh, yeah. exponential growth and it means we just have to keep eating the planet alive yeah. just to keep in the same position and none of it makes sense at all. So, you know, Jason Hickel's work with, with degrowth, I think is, is really important to just um, how to, how to get this out in the, in the broader conversation, right? So that we don't have our little communities where we're all, I keep having these same conversations with it's like singing to the choir where we're all nodding our heads and out having vigils. Yes, we believe in the same things, but how to get beyond, um, our, our circles so maybe a new school is a is a very special thing but we need many 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 new schools so we have one in London but then there's there's they're popping up all over um, yeah. and we, we really need to, to speed it up and multiply it very quickly because we've so little time to, to deal with these these issues like the planetary crisis is not going away it's Oh, we're yeah. going to see Maria's, yes. uh, yeah, and and how to um, really latch on to this the spiritual side of things. So, you know, I grew up in in Ireland. I'm an Irish Catholic, so it was very much part of um, a daily life. Uh, not we weren't very religious or anything, but school was always. Um, uh, I don't want to have a conversation about religion, but it, it took me decades to realize that spirituality was part of, of who I am and what I do. It was actually Emergence magazine. Some of them are there behind me. But when they reached out to me um, yeah, years ago and they started talking about spiritual ecology, it, it made me stop and, th and think and was something I had never done. I never realized, oh, um, my work is is about this, uh, there's this spiritual aspect. And I guess I knew it deep down, but I had never, uh, you know, 
gone and excavated and, and looked into that more. And I realize now that maybe this is something that's become very disconnected from our, we've kind of put religion it's into this negative box. There's a lot of um, awful things that happened with yeah. the Catholic Church and how to create a more um, holistic, I think this is why we keep going back, to, or I keep going back to it, indigenous writers, uh, Natalie Diaz yeah. and Joy Harho, and, and, and learning what we've forgotten, you know, all this knowledge that's, that's there. And we just somehow put it into this box saying that's, that's old, it's, it's not, um, it's from the past and we need to move into the future, which is this glorious, first world shiny glittery shiny place and forget yeah. about all of this stuff and i think we're we're now realizing uh, uh yeah and i think that also um a lot of the time people are, are confronted with talking about nature in protest they are protesting something that is being done against nature so there's a lot of emphasis let's say in the media on nature being something that we are always uh, in a protest for or we're we're against something that's against something to do with nature whether it's pollution or uh, whatever so having local projects that are nature based that you know so that young people are growing up with nature projects festivals celebrations because that whole you know when I think about you know even the word environment when I when I think word environment and I try I have worked many years to like really get that sense that I am part of my environment there is there is no me and it and that is a that's a practice that's a lifetime practice because we have been brainwashed since young age to consider that this is something out there. So when I hear the word environment, I always see it with uh, inverted uh, commas around it. And I always have this idea that it's a protest. That's, I'm only just coming up with this right now as I'm, as I'm talking that that's a bad way to have a relationship to our biosphere that that's what I think. So I have, I have, you know, I still have a lot of work to do, I know, you know, and I think I've been working on it, but uh, it's still, when I see that word in my mind's eye, I imagine banners, protest, etc. And I shouldn't be, I should be thinking other things like whales swimming in the ocean, maybe, or I should have a different mental image that is that immediate word for environment but no it's not it's about banners and flags and protesting so that's a whole other thing to go into the whole brainwashing of what does it mean to protect or be in or work with uh, nature i love that Trudy, and i think the 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 sadness of it all i think that's the first time i've heard someone say that and it and it, I think you've just opened up a whole other avenue for conversation. The fact that we do now, when we think of of nature, we associate automatically, we have protests and people on the streets. Mm. And, and then you said, I should be thinking about whales. And, and then I immediately think of, well, they're going extinct. <laughs> and the right whale here in, in the States, they've said now that they've mentioned how many pairs that, that they they think are left and and so I think unfortunately we are in this emergency situation where um, what we cherish and think of when we think of nature is is all it's everything is suffering um, and is in a place of emergency you know in Ireland we have the curlew which is this beautiful symbol of the Irish mm -hmm. countryside it's part of our heritage and it's on the brink of extinction they, they counted only 34 breeding pairs last year wow. and um, that's why I'm working with friends of RD Bog trying to protect our precious little raised bog on the east coast it's the most easterly bog in ireland and um, they want to build a road through it through peatland and we the community have to come together and we're out there with our signs we, we had a cop 26 climate justice rally on saturday um to to try and tell 
the government, all of the simple facts, you know, we need the bogs, they store more. I love trees, you know, I love trees, but the bogs store more carbon than the rainforests. And they're Ireland's yeah. rainforests are the bogs. And to the fact that we have to have old people and retired people and babies and children and families go out in the wind and the rain. It was a howling, miserable day. Yeah. And they went out with their signs yeah. and they stood there in the middle of the bog to try and send a message to the government and say, no, you shouldn't build a road here. Save our bog. <laughs> Save their bogs. And, um, and I think, uh, yeah, so I think what you've, what you've brought up, this nature protest uh, relationship, it would be lovely if I could uh, throw a flowery blanket over it and come up with something beautiful to say, but I think that's opened a, a, a wormhole in my head now for me to, to think about. <laughs> I, I do, you know, we're, um, we're, we're visual artists and I think, so do you think that part of our, our job is to create yeah. a vision, yes. right, for the, yes. the future? So we don't want to constantly say oh look at all of the horrors we want to show what's um what's possible and how we could live together yeah. and i i feel like this is what i'm supposed to do but i haven't quite figured out how to do it and that's i think one way was i thought well maybe with these alphabets and the the languages yeah. and cre creating a way could be a, a little like tiny baby steps way towards doing that um, and then I, I created a wildflower alphabet. This was something I just did um, oh. this year. Yeah, wildflower alphabet for New York City. And uh, I was only able to get a few seeds so that we could actually plant certain words. And so the first word I did was love, obviously, L-O-V-E. It's a short word, so it just needs four seeds. And who doesn't want love? And now we can sprinkle it around <laughs> um, the city and, and plant love. But I, I found myself all through lockdown and the last two years more and more all of the projects I worked on they all involved love um this concept I think I might have even put it into the title learning to be better lovers was the title I gave Michael for oh lovely I, and I and it's something I've always steered clear of I you know I thought oh that's very sentimental I, I'm not working you know with love what, what does that mean but I, I think I, in my old age <laughs> I've come to realize that that's the heart of everything right is that we are a species that loves and that's what um, helps us get through our our daily lives it's how we, we work together we love yeah. whether it's our families mm -hmm. like on that small scale or the species and then beyond it's, I think it, it's with me it's this constant I, um yeah trying to understand how can we move beyond the human yeah. i think you've just hit the nail on the head because again with the whole of the uh, uh, uh climate change and everything you know that the anthropocene has uh impacted the uh, planet that impacts humans uh in a detrimental way you know again it's not our failure to act uh it, it's not a failure of science and technology our our, our challenge right now is to uh, be in the realm of love, to be able to deal with what we need to deal with because this is our home. We have to really get down to the basics of loving our home. That's it, you know. And I think as artists that, you know, uh, 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 to have a vision is to project value into the future what's going to save our lives 